July 4th, St. Andrew of Crete, Archbishop of Gortina. Born in the year 660 in Damascus, Syria, he died July 4th, 726, although church historians do not agree on the date of his death. One suggests the year 712, while others the year 726. His feast day is July 4th. Among Eastern Christians, he is best known as the author of The Great Canon, a lengthy prayer service traditionally offered as a penitential practice during Lent. He is also venerated as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church, where he is better known for his writings on the Blessed Virgin Mary. He should not be confused with a different St. Andrew of Crete, who was celebrated October 17th, who suffered martyrdom while defending the veneration of icons during the 8th century. Andrew was born in Damascus of Christian parents. He was a mute from birth until the age of seven. When his parents brought him to church and he received Holy Communion, he began to speak. So great is the power of the divine and Holy Communion. St. Andrew led a strict and chaste life. He was meek and abstinent, such that all were amazed at his virtue and reasoning of mind. Andrew went to Jerusalem and entered the monastery of St. Sava, wherein he was 15 years old. He went on to serve as a cleric of the Jerusalem Patriarchate and was sent as a representative to the Sixth Ecumenical Council in Constantinople. The council took up the monothelite controversy, a disagreement as to whether Christ had both a divine and human will, as the church teaches, or only a divine will. Though the question may seem abstract to modern ears, it was an important point bearing on the reality of Jesus' full humanity. In the year 685, Andrew returned to Constantinople, where he did charitable work for orphans and the poor. He served as well as a deacon in the great Hagia Sophia Church. Around the year 700, he became archbishop of the city of Gortina on the island of Crete. In the year 712, during a resurgence of the monothelite heresy, Andrew was forced to attend an illegitimate gathering in which the Byzantine emperor Philippicus Bardanes tried to reverse the decisions of the Sixth Council. Andrew's coerced attendance was questioned, but forgiven by the reigning Pope Constantine. Little is known about the rest of the archbishop's life, which ended peacefully. While his participation in the Sixth Council is important, St. Andrew of Crete legacy has more to do with his outstanding sermons and liturgical hymns reflective of a deep interior life of faith. The great canon, his most ambitious known work, takes around three hours to chant. It incorporates more than 200 full body prostrations along with its many litanies, odes, and refrains. Surveying the Old and New Testaments, it stresses the urgency of repentance and conversion. The service begins... Where shall I begin to lament the deeds of my wretched life? What first fruit shall I offer, O Christ, for my present lamentation? But in thy compassion grant me release from my falls. Come, wretched soul, with your flesh, confess to the Creator of all. In future refrain from your former brutishness, and offer to God tears in repentance. Interspersed throughout is the great canon's defining plea. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. His outward appearance was such that seeing his face and hearing his words flowing like honey, everyone found pleasure and amended their ways. On one occasion, returning from Constantinople, Andrew foretold his death before he arrived in Crete, and so it happened. When the boat in which he traveled sailed near the island of Mytilene, this beacon of the church ended his earthly life, and with his soul took up habitation in the kingdom of Christ around the year 726.